intention of stimulating the teaching yep. of basic computer science in school. Yep, so, so basically, um, the UK has a pretty um, storied history of uh, people that are in their, let's say, 40s to 60s, maybe even 30s, uh, who grew up with things like the BBC Micro and the Sinclair and um, and these these relatively raw, not necessarily powerful machines that that uh, encourage slash forced you to kind of get involved with the actual system in order to learn slash do anything cool slash play games slash do anything fun. Sort of like our TRS 80s, like the Trash 80s. Exactly. What was, what was that language? There was a language where you where you stacked everything. Basic. No, no. Uh, well, it wasn't necessarily on the TRS-80, but there was a whole other there, there was that's no, another. But it was okay. So that's what. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll so, think of it. Yes. Think of harkening it. back to the days of the TRS-80, the Vic-20, the you know the the slow machines that were, were pretty close to the metal, um, and in order to do things, you, you had to kind of um, trailblaze. And get things done for yourself, but they also were, um, they were also pretty um, affordable. So they were affordable machines, so that a lot of people could afford to have them. Um, they weren't so expensive that you wouldn't feel that you wouldn't feel bad, you know, tossing one at an eight-year-old and being like, "Well, if they break it, they break it," uh, you know, or something like that. So they said, "Well, why don't we, why don't we have anything like that now?" I mean, I'm, you know, technology has gotten to the point that I bet we could make something cheap so that people could hack on it, learn programming, um, and, and potentially we could have it, um, you know, have both VGA or I'll have, have HDMI out for uh, a high-end monitor, but also composite out if you wanted to just hook it up to the TV. It, it, they wanted it to be as approachable as possible to allow an eight-year-old who just has an old TV um, and a keyboard to start coding. Um, so they wa they wanted to make uh, as low of a price point as possible. And they said, "Well, oh, how, how about 25 bucks? Yeah, that seems that seems pretty fair." And they did it 25 dollars American, despite being in the UK, uh, because they wanted to, to price it at, at, in dollars. Why I don't quite remember, um, but I know it was. I think it had something to do with um, a lot of negotiation with uh, chip companies. So it doesn't matter how many euros or pounds it costs, it's dollars. So they, uh, the end product. Well, they, well, it was it was a nonprofit that uh, that. And when did this start? Uh, 1990, 2000. Last year. Oh, oh. Re okay. Recent, very recent. Uh huh. But they, it went back to the old the old uh, TRS 80. Yeah, the, the history like, like, the history yeah. is long. Okay. But the actual actions of Raspberry Pi is relatively short. Um, and is there a, an easily installed uh, chassis around there so you don't need to worry about the kids getting it? Do you like no. the biggest bolts? So the, the, big thing, the big thing about that is, is in order to keep costs low, they've dispensed with almost everything. Uh -huh. There's, there's um, you know, I, I forgot the SD card today. So there's literally no code at all right because the the this this particular board is hard coded to look for the bootloader on the SD card so you can't boot from anything else because it boots from the SD card it's hard coded to do it um, you could even use that method you talked about a year or two a couple of years ago no, but, but, uh, no, no but you, but you could probably code. make yeah, something yeah. you could you, probably put yeah, a little you, bit of code in there to get it to boot from the network you, you could put it, you could put enough code to, to, to network um, yeah, but you would have to put that code on the ST card because that's where it looks okay. to boot. And you probably want some. Uh, you probably want some disk space anyhow. So right for something. Maybe. But but, but the, the point of it is this on board comes with nothing. So compare that to the Insignia Infocast, which um, initially I think the um, this this was this is a store brand Chumbi device. May have got made by, uh, well, the chief architect was a guy named Bunny Huang, who was uh, the guy behind hacking the Xbox back in the day. No, he's not the Wang computer guy, is he? Uh, is that family? I don't think so. Um, so anyways, 
They make a they make a product called Chumbi. Chumbi is a, an internet connected device uh, built on low power systems. C H U M B Y. Chumbi, yeah. Well, this is the insignia Infocast, but Chumbi is the company, um, and Bunny Huang is the, is the was the chief technical was the technical lead on that. So the comparing comparing the Raspberry Pi to the insignia Infocast, there's a slight difference on how polished the product that you get out of the box is. You know, this has a uh, an eight inch touch screen, this doesn't have a screen. This has two gigs of onboard data that, that boots an operating system that came from the factory. Uh, this has a spot for you to put an SD card so that you can put your own operating system on it and it comes with nothing. You put your own, there technically is a downloads page on Raspberry Pi. So, can you run your Raspberry Pi? Um, no. Yes and no. No is, is the answer. <laughs> yes and no. No. Well, okay. Well, looks here. like there's Debian. Very qualified. There, there is Debian. Uh, let's, so, let's do it. Um, so, on the downloads page, they do actually give you links to, uh, to SD card images that you can use DD um, on Linux or uh, a disk imager on Windows. Debian Squeeze is the, is the recommended install right now. Uh, it's an ARM install of Debian. Um, Debian's got a ton of ARM repositories. Yeah. See, um, Debian maintains stuff for all of a lot of many more processors than anybody else does. Right. That the, the 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 thing that people made fun of them for was supporting all those darn processors. Why in the heck were they doing it? Well, something like this come along and they're like, wow, look at all the processors that Debian supports. That's awesome. Right. So, what, what was your weakness can become your strength quickly. Yeah, okay, um, so this Broadcom, Broadcom system on a chip, yep. it includes the ARM uh, 700 megahertz processor. Yep, it's an ARM system okay. on a chip. Okay. Um, it's All right. uh, 256 megs of RAM, I think. 700 megahertz ARM 7 processor, I think. Video core, yeah. Yep, yep. It's, got, right. it's, it's, got a, it's got, it does have some dedicated video chips. Uh, specifically, uh, they'll, they'll come in most handy at this point for um, hardware processing of video. Uh, so, so you can, there, are, there is a picture of somebody playing Quake 3 on one of these. Um, there also is a picture of uh, Big Buck Bunny running a 1080p on, a, on an HDM, uh, through an HDMI cable straight on a big screen. So, you know, that stuff can happen. And then they do have a thirty-five dollar upgrade, uh, premium yep. boutique model that they started it's selling it's in, it's in and March. And the, and the funny part of that is they actually started with the model B, uh, the boutique model with the Ethernet port. The only one that you can purchase right now is the one with the Ethernet port. Is that the is that the expensive this, boutique this model? The, the oh, incredibly expensive thirty-five dollar model. Okay. Is the one that we have, and that's the okay. only one that they're currently manufacturing. Eventually, they'll yeah. be making both, but um, they, they let's say they somewhat underestimated the demand, but not by too much. They did sign up with two high end electronics distributors instead of attempting to sell it and, and distribute it themselves. Um, however, those two high end, high traffic electronics distributors received about two million hits each. Like per hour, the, the time, the time that the, at the time that the uh, uh, that the Raspberry Pi came out. So actually, the Raspberry Pi people crashed both Element 14 and uh, RS something electronics or something like that. It's Premier Farnell and two well, two two big UK um, places. I, I got mine through Element 14 eventually. I was trying to buy it the first day, and then I heard about all the problems and the crashing and. The Craziness. I ended up buying it like a week later, or ordering it a week later, which was like. So this is yeah, expected you know? to be worldwide for the third world countries that have been looking for that hundred dollar computer. They can answer. No, no, I don't think so. Not, I mean, you hypothetically could, but it's it's not. It's not the, the the main goal is just you is is UK. getting this machine into kids' hands to enable kids to learn programming 
and technology. It's not an experiment it's with. It's an experiment. I mean, plus it's a great. Pro I could see it as an awesome prototype type of thing. It is an excellent prototyping box, and that's and one most thing of the stuff I've ever written. Uh, for Controllers or something that didn't have any monitor on them anyhow. Right. Monitor keyboard anyhow. So, so who needs that? And, that? and that's that's one of the things I wanted to show. Wisconsin's own Ben Heck recently, at, uh, and when I say recently, I mean today, um, created a case for the Raspberry Pi, which is amazing. It's it's designed with the old um, it's designed with the old um, BBC Micro in mind. Um, and I can actually show you the thing. It's, what it's, I, yeah. yeah. The, so, what I was thinking of was that one thing. laptop per child. Yeah, OLPC, the one laptop this, per child. This, this is not this is designed not, to be okay. the, the one laptop per child. Okay. Okay. One laptop per child was designed to be a self-sufficient, cheap computing device for $100 or for, more. For, for the masses. Yes. Right, for right. But this is, the, this is more. Because in Africa, you. you I don't think you're, you have the, the, the oh, kids that... Terrible. Kids wouldn't have a TV to plug your Right, screen. right. You don't have a TV. You don't have an oh, SD card. Okay. You don't have a... etc. And, and okay. you know, and if, and if you just okay. hold this in a desert, it's probably going to get some sand on it. It's probably not going to go so hot. So it's, it's not designed to be self-sustaining. It's designed to be a, um, a springboard for innovation. And so in this particular case, Ben Heck, Wisconsin's own. Um, came really? up with a, with a, with basically he, he took a USB keyboard, um, painted the the F keys to, to make them look like the, the old BBC Micro F keys, um, and then put that on. Uh, let's see. Here. He he put that on um, a hinge. And so underneath this, this isn't full. Actually, underneath it is all project space. Or more or less, the, the Raspberry Pi is there. The back of it has. Or underneath it, or is it just plugged in up there? Underneath the keyboard. It's underneath the keyboard. Okay. You and put then, the keyboard up like a school <coughs> desk and you, sort of a yeah, thing. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's, it's the, it was designed half like a BBC micro, underneath the keyboard. Half like a school well, that's hinged. Hinged. Yeah. Hinged yeah. up. Yeah. Right. See the okay. hinge. One inch. So let me see if I can give you. Is he in Wisconsin or yeah. from Wisconsin? He, he's, he's both. Well, so I don't know if he's from Wisconsin, but he's in Wisconsin. Element 14. Where is where is the company located? Element 14. I honestly don't know. They're I think they're a UK company to begin with, but they actually. Um, but yeah, but Ben Hack is, I would say, infamous for his hacking ability. He's he was the I believe the first person to make an Xbox 360 laptop. Um, using like an actual Xbox 360, and just going from there. Um, he made uh, uh, he's he's made portable versions of just about everything. Um, you name it, he's probably hacked into it. Um, and how much does this little keyboard uh, that you can plug your Raspberry Pi board? In? He has probably created it first. <laughs> this is the thing. It's it's um he did he's not selling it. He just made it. He just made it for himself. Well, and the thing that he did along with it then is. He here, here is here are the files for the Raspberry Pi case that he created. If you have a laser cutter, download it, cut it, use it. Go nuts. Um, you know, it's it's a very hack friendly platform, and, and, and the people that are on it are, some, are, are kind of in a, a hack friendly initiative type thing. Anything that can be made with one of those three D printers. Yeah. Uh, well, I, just, I, I forgot to bring to do the case. Sorry. Um, also, you have to think about the thing too. Is, is that something like that, with proper programming, can draw incredibly little power. Right. It's, you know it what I mean by much. incredible power. Low power is is that you know when people make controllers, you know like cell phone batteries, they they spend their most of their time basically off. You know you, you know they have power management things, so it basically goes off and just kind of comes up. You know now and then. So yeah, and, and I would say the real power of this little thing is not the board itself, because this Insignia Infocast, which is an ARM 800 megahertz processor, two gigs of onboard memory, USB, Wi-Fi, touchscreen, and a partridge in a pear tree, I got for 40 bucks from eBay. The original original retail was 200, but it kind of flopped on the market and 
the remnants of of of, uh, of the Unsignia Infocast can you can get for between forty and sixty bucks on eBay. So this product has maybe a hundred and fifty dollars worth of hardware in it, but almost no one paying attention to it. It's it's actually it's actually hack friendly as well as if you look on Bunny's website, which you can is, get the three and a half inch ones for three or four bucks. Yeah, there's also a three and a half inch version, but it has a slower processor. So, so Andrew Bunny Huang Bunny Studios. Yeah, so this is fifty nine dollars. Yeah, it's 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 between forty and sixty uh, shit directly to you. And so it has touch screen. The Infocast. That those things. Yeah, it's touch screen. Yeah, it's an eight hundred by six hundred touch screen, eight inches. Which, if you're looking for that to buy it to add to this thing, costs you between. It'll probably cost you a hundred bucks. What kind of processor and stuff? Is it learning Linux? Uh, it's running Linux kernel. Yes. Okay. Um, and um, you can get. Um, they actually make you, you, you have a, there, there is a way to unlock um, SSH enabled by default well it's not enabled by default but you can unlock SSH through the touch screen through um, a back door yeah. you can um, <coughs> you can com uh, you get a GCC compiler you, or you can get a GCC compiler um, through Presses through 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 another hacker-friendly backdoor, um, and you can get some other um, things. BusyBox is is installed okay. when you SSH in, um, and so it's pretty batteries included, despite the fact that it doesn't have a battery. Um, you know, other than an AC adapter, it's it's pretty batteries included. Uh, as far as um, there's also um, oh yeah. You do have an AC adapter in there. Yeah, this one has this one has a this one has a, um, an AC adapter. But you talk like but it's got a port for it. So yeah. yeah. Here's here's Bunny putting a WebKit browser on an Insignia Infocast. So that's show me is what's spelled with one. Okay. Yeah. What now? What you can you what what's the relationship between the the Pi, Raspberry Pi and the Insignia? You can, you have, they run you, Linux. They and, run Linux. And, and right. Right, right. nowadays you can buy them for around the same price. But I mean, you're not networking them, or you're not. They don't have anything. They to are not. Do with they are not inherently connected to each other, other than the fact that I own both of right. them. They're there. You can purchase them for about the same price, roughly speaking. Um, they both run Linux. They're both hacker friendly. But the difference between the two is the community. Uh, for example, there's no such thing as insignia infocast.stackexchange.com. But there is a Stack Exchange site de um, de de um, devoted to, I have questions about the Raspberry Pi. Like, uh, for example, I want to buy a screen. Can I install WebOS? So, and this, uh, this, is, this is basically a, a forum, yeah, and so, and this, this is where I, I'm on here. I'm like, well, because everybody's like, WebOS is open source, just put it on there. Who, I'm like, well, it's... Who has WebOS now, or who is the HP, is HP. In the, HP is okay. in the process of open sourcing WebOS. Right. WebOS 1.0 is supposed to come out in September. Whether or not it does or not, we'll find out in September. But if it does, it's possible that someone could hack WebOS onto this thing. Um, and, and, you know, be able to, to do it. Is anybody asking that question for the info, Infocast? No. Um, so it's more hardware, more fun things, less community. So if you're looking for a community of people that all have the same hardware and are all looking to do awesome stuff, Raspberry Pi is the way to go. Um, there are lots more, you know, there's a RaspMC, uh, is another thing going on? Let's see. Rasp. I mean, one of the easiest possibilities amongst the millions of possibilities, since it's got an HDMI out, you can hook it in to your HDTV, and you got something, you got networking capability and whatever, and you can integrate this into some entertainment type thing. Well, and that's actually, RESPMC is XBMC, 
um, based the the barest essentials of, of putting XPMC on here so that you could make a media center out of this little credit card device. Right. That the, that plus an eight gig um, this plus an eight gig uh, SD card plus uh, an HDMI cable equals media center for your PC. Or for and you your, got networking so you can pull everything else off the network. Yep, so. you can stream, you can do all that sort of stuff. So, so it's almost like a box. Uh, yeah, bo I don't think Boxy will run. I think Boxy's a little more greedy, and I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's compiled for ARM. Plus, Boxy is going towards um, uh, devices, dedicated devices. The the Linux um, the Linux install for Boxy is no longer being officially updated by Boxy. They they have officially indicated this most recent update will never come to Linux. I believe, yeah, because I think the la the update before this one was the last one for um, for the installer. You, you can't just make a boxy box yourself. Or at least, well, you can't you can't make the most recent boxy box for yourself. There's still an installer if you want to do it, but they've indicated as a company that they're not making a priority on supporting. Um, you, whatever you do is going to be kind of on your own. Where XPMC is um, open source and you know, plenty of people are trying to put it everywhere. Obviously, this isn't an Xbox, despite the fact that XBMC is the Xbox Media Center. I have it under it. Yeah. So yeah, and you, and you can there's a there's it's, there's a, a package for Linux. Um, obviously, there's an ARM. I recall it does have like you said the uh, heard built-in video acceleration. Does not have like uh, like MPEG uh, yeah, decoding? Code. That you was know. one of the things that they paid for is. Some of those codecs, uh, right. the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Uh, because without Linux, that, your your ability to play an MPEG movie or something like that would be yeah they, horribly limited. Right. So so one of the one of the few things they did um, they they did uh, spend money on was uh, to make sure that they had paid for the ability to decode. I think it was XBID, H two six four, and MPEG. Right. Like the big three. It would be nice, yeah, if you had some open GL type. Yeah, and like Fiora like doesn't have a licensing fee, so I think you can do Fiora and open and stuff. But anything that had a fee, they tried to pay for the highest fee stuff. So if you did want to make, um, you know, a, an XBMC box or some sort of video ish station. Right, right. To, play, but to play HD video would otherwise be, <laughs> yeah. you know, like good luck with that. Yeah, you, if you were trying to do that software only, it would not go so hot for you. So, yeah, so so there are distributions of Linux and other um, purpose-specific communities that are organically forming around the fact that this is incredibly popular and cheap. Um, despite the fact that there's no case, no screen, and no cables that come with it. That, no, you know, what literally when I you got just it, find stuff that you've got at home. Right, you, 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 find, you find composite cables, you find a USB yeah. cable. Literally, when I, when I got it, there was this in a box, this box, um, the electrostatic bag that it came in, and I think a photocopied piece of paper that said, uh, you can download your uh, your operating system from raspberrypi.org slash downloads. That is it. Yeah. And, and you know... That's the hand-holding you get. Well, it's the hand-holding you get from the box. Right. I mean, the Raspberry Pi website is incredibly informative. There's a forum on the website. There's a forum on Element 14. Stack Exchange has created its own community. Right. But not it's not really that it. bad, though, because you should be able to just, you know, you put... You Put your image on the SD card, stick it in, and boot her up. Right, and, and, there, and there's also at least somewhat of an assumption that you may have an internet connected PC someplace. Yeah. Um, you know, because right, right, right. Or you, you have a PC because you're going to be making an image file from right. the SD card. Right. right. Um, so there, there, it, it is assuming that you don't necessarily. And I'm need to be assuming with some sophisticated, with the proper computer. tools, you could sit there and be building software and put it then on that SD card. Yeah. Probably could be customizing that image that's on that SD card as as required. So if I want to get my high school son who's not into hardware or software or anything like that other than you know, using the web interested in this, is there a, a high school age subgroup in this community? Well, it's designed for schools. Um, 
as far as a community specifically for for students, like a Raspberry Pi it's student to get them in, community? Yeah, to get them in, uh, uh, in what all, you know, what kind of investment uh, am I looking at? 35 bucks plus an old TV. Okay, plus. so that's the thing is, um, do you want it to be hooked up to a to a wired? Do you want it to hook up to the net? Period. Yeah. Okay. You got yeah, you're you're talking, talking, you're talking, talking like a USB keyboard, yeah, USB yeah, mouse, yeah, or something, and go so, with a boutique model. So you're talking, you're buy. talking model, you know, because if you don't want to buy a, an external uh, Wi-Fi dongle going through one of your USB ports, because that's the other option. But buy the Model A, buy a USB um, Wi-Fi dongle and go through Wi-Fi. But then that takes up one of your two USB ports. Right. No, I do the thirty-five dollars. Yeah. Okay. Thirty-five dollar Raspberry Pi, shipping, whatever, a couple bucks. Yeah. Um, SD card, at least four gigabytes, oh, eight five. gigabytes or more is recommended. Right. You probably already have composite video cable or HDMI cable in order to hook it up to the TV slash computer. Uh, we've got one. Yeah. Okay. Um, headphones wait, or, wait, or if video. you don't have the HDMI, <laughs> what what's the other? The other is just regular composite RCA video. One of these guys. Sir. All right. Uh, yeah. yeah. If, yeah. you, if you if you have um, old, anything old anything school. from like yeah. a Nintendo on all right, old all right. okay. old video, okay. um, there's a headphone out. So if you have a pair of headphones or a or pair a speaker. of speakers that goes from headphone out, yeah, or or a um, or a headphone to RCA adapter, which I forgot at home. To put, uh, power the speakers. What would you do? Yeah. 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 Power the speakers. Oh um, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's yeah. it's unpowered signal. It's it's, yeah. it's enough. Low it's low enough to power headphones. Right. But, um, right. right. Okay. But yeah, you, I wouldn't. I wouldn't yeah. be. You know. Two fifty six mega. 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 Which yeah, the cost money. Image is larger. If you don't got, have the them. image, you have to put. But up. you may already have. You may already have a TV with a composite input, okay. or or a computer monitor, or a TV, or <laughs> uh, USB input. So anything, oh, or even, really? or you could SSH into it once you set up SSH. So if you have if you have an image set up with SSH, you can SSH into this. Right. We well we. I'd like to run. Oh okay, yeah. So so running from here, USB keyboard. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Right. Many people will purchase a uh, four-port USB hub just to give yourself right. some more ports. Right. Right. Um, don't expect for yeah. Not everything will work because not everything will get the power that it needs to. Right. Well, right. So don't right. expect a self-powered USB hard drive. Right. To but run if you off got, of this because it's right. But if you got power, power but if you got a if you have Powered hub. A powered USB hub would be hub, then you're good. Yeah. So so that's or or a powered external hard drive. That's well, only yeah. you know right, right. one of the two. Which you may have one or the other. USB one. Two. Two. Oh. USB two point oh. Um, headphone out, composite out, and then you've got then you've got all of the fun little there's I two C connections, there's uh, DSI which you can use to power internal L C D screens. Um, I don't remember what this input is. I know Ben Hex says what it is. Um, and then the GPIO is the general purpose input output. And I believe you did say already, but where does it get its power from? USB micro. Okay, that's a separate plug, you know, the micro. Yeah, is it's that it's just purely for powering? Is that, is that yeah, also pure, provide, pure, is that, is pure that pure also power. do... Yeah, you can plug it, that into does a that USB actually have USB? Have USB does that actually have a USB port also? To the best of my knowledge, no. Power only. Okay. Power only in, then the other USBs in and out. In and out. Yeah. Okay. Well, in info. Okay. Yeah, and in, very low power. On low power. It well, I mean, it would be useful. For instance, you could be powering the thing off of your PC, off of your PC. USB port yeah. and also give it communication. Yeah, and, and, and there are people that, that are that are trying to go through the. So if I want to do this from a battery or if I want to do this from solar power or what do I need to do? Yeah. You know, there, there are people that are asking those questions and saying, so you know, or if I wanted to make a car computer out of it, and you know, it's I would say it's a pretty, it's it's open enough that you can set up a car PC from this, 
and it's small enough that you could probably find a spot for it in your car, and it's USB powered, and many US, well many cars have USB, I mean ports. True. Can Whether or not it powers it is, is something you would have to probably try. Do but you have a, a Python interpreter compiler or whatever? That, sure because he, Python, he, you know. he knows Python. He, he's, I'm sure, I guess this year, I'm sure they have. He did, he did Java, but I want to keep him bizarre at, at Python. Not. See if there's a, 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 a Raspberry Pi Python. By default, we will be supporting Python as the educational language. So oh, there you go. the okay. official, not not only right. is it right. there, it is right. the official programming okay. language of the Raspberry okay. Pi. So there, there that, see, I, I want to, I want to get him into, the, and then then I want to find some projects that a kid, a high school kid, yep. would be interested in programming in Python on that platform. So he's learning about, you know, he's, he'll have this feeling of, oh gee, dad, I know all this, this hardware, because look, here's the thing. And I, I know, know he said, oh, 256 megabytes? Yeah, 256 megs of RAM, I think. It, it's it, not the, yeah. Originally, the, the, the Model A was yeah. supposed to have 128. Yeah, 256 is quite a bit. I mean, you can't run absolutely anything, but yeah. Well, well, I mean, you're talking is, about the original Xbox. Also, you got to remember, Xbox the ARM software is going to be a little room. bit smaller, too, uh, than, you know, x86 stuff. Yeah, that, that 256 megabytes of RAM is on that broadband, broadcom system on a chip. Okay, right. With, along with our, can, can you point those out? I'm sorry, Is what? it easy enough to see those? Yeah. What are you looking for? Uh, just each part of the, the system on a chip. The system on a chip is right in the middle. Uh, okay. Boom. And it's on a chip. Oh, okay. I mean, so, it's okay, so that's got the memory right in there. Yep. You can't. System on a chip. All right, all right, all right. And then, you all know, stuff. again, I, I, I will not claim to be an electronics genius that can tell you every solder point and everything. I'm, you know, one of the reasons why I have one is I'm, I, Linux is getting easy, honestly. And, and um, you don't have to get very far, you don't have to get your elbows dirty anymore in order to do something on a Linux laptop or a Linux desktop, most of the time. Um, yeah. The additional challenge of saying, okay, you know, okay, you're, you're embedding Linux on an R, you know, with, with, and you have ARM architecture, um, and you got this, these inputs and these outputs, what are you going to do? Uh, and, and, and giving yourself that question. I mean, not, I, I not think the thing is, if they have right? a full-blown, a good, you know, distribution for the thing to put on that card, you're not working in that primitive of uh, environment. True. I mean, you've got Fedora and Debian available to you. So it's, so it's not like um, if you, the, the, that's the big thing about this, is you can choose and to Assuming write there's enough scratch. RAM and stuff yeah. for it, you know, to a large extent, in the Debian repositories, they'll have everything. You know, they pro you know, like I doubt if OpenOffice will fit it. Will work. there's enough memory for it to run? But I bet you can get the package. Right. You yeah, know, LibreOffice or OpenOffice. You know. Right, and and you know, and the and the, the packages are compiled. You're not, for the most part, you, you don't have to start compiling things by yourself. Right. If, but if you want to, or if some stuff isn't available, you may have to. And learning how to do that might be useful. Um, and, and that's the sort of thing. Yeah, let's say it's probably going to be all the gazillions of I don't know how many packages there are in Debian, but there's a ridiculous number of them. There's a lot, and I'm sure that 90, 95 or 98 percent of them probably there for other distributions will be there. Some of them will be kind of silly because you just don't have enough RAM. But right, it, it, obviously, it's you know it's not a perfect system for everything. You, so you know, someone someone ran Quake 3. Is this a gaming machine? No. Might you be able it to... It may not be as bad as you think, though, well, because it's got, if, if they've got 3D acceleration built in on the video... Oh, yeah. See, the video, so that's why, it's, no, it's, 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 it's not a firm no. Like, for example, are you into emulation? Can this thing run a Nintendo emulator? It probably, probably would be. It would is probably not be that pitiful. It probably wouldn't be as pitiful as you expect. Right. Well, that's and that's the thing is, is you know, on the emulation side, you could hardware-wise, you can probably do Atari, Commodore 64, oh. 
Well, I was assuming you had a source code. I'm assuming you could compile the stuff in right. the game. You know, right. And, and so, you know, you're, you're talking... Emulating. Oh, that's getting, su that's getting evil. Super <laughs> Nintendo Genesis, you probably got that. I mean, there are, there are hardware-wise, that's probably not, uh, you know... When you're talking about Nintendo 64 PlayStation Dreamcast, probably not. Right. But, so, but, you know, there's, you're, but you're still talking about... Emulation-wise, you're talking about a catalog of maybe... You know, two thousand games of the, of the systems that I was just talking about. Maybe a, you know, maybe fifteen hundred plus plus the entire Debian games catalog. So I mean, even if you wanted to just do that. Okay. So back to the hardware. The yeah. The system on a chip that's got that video core, four GPU, along with that with the central processor, the ARM, right? Yep. And let's see. When do they? When will they have the Python available? Well, I'm sure it's in there this, now. Well, actually, well, that's, it says that's, it's planned. That'd be that's, shocking. One of the things, yeah, one of the things I wanted to mention is there. Um, yeah, this again. If you're looking for more information about the specifics, one, they they actually have a community-supported online magazine called Magpie, and that's this here. It's on my the, yeah. The first the first issue is on my blog. It's uh, a, a couple months ago. I, I, I am planning to post a couple more. Um, uh, the more issues. I know there's, there's cause they have Magpie two and Magpie issue three. They have all Perl and all these other interpretive languages in all oh. of the, all yeah. in all of the Debian package deals for every processor. Yeah, but this is the the, the kind of the thing with yeah, that is. Need it now. Well, it'll be there now. Well, it would, would be shocked. But, 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 there now. You know. That's an interesting point, is when you say, I need it now, Well, when when are you going to get the Raspberry Pi even if you order well, it? Well, even if you, okay, like right now, if you have well, the thing on there, if you took the Debian, the, of the, summer. the Debian or Fedora yeah, thing, and, you know, and you put it on there, I will be shocked if there is not, like, Perl and Python on there. Right. It would just I be like, right. it would be just like, you know, it's like, yeah. Where, where can we go to the Python? Can you just go to the Python or? Go to Debian.packages.debian.org. Okay, actually, I recently asked a question about this. Um, so, one of the things I asked on raspberrypi.stackusteams.com is so if I want to find out packages, where do I go? Somebody responded to me, how to install Debian. software for Debian, how to install software for Arch, which is the, the two official downloads that are on the top. Right. Of if you the, go to packages.debian.org, right. which is, which is in there, packages.debian.org uh, slash squeeze um, is the, the packages in, in squeeze. So, so language, language, no. Big software language? Is that where it is? Well, you probably better go to search one because there's so much uh, okay. stuff in there you get lost. Sure. Um, where's the uh, search? Uh, we go back one. Let's see. And they, there's, oh. Python. Well, if, if they had, a, yeah, if they had a page for Boom. for, for oh, Java. You have a Python page. <coughs> okay, these are already in there, right? This is the, yeah. This wait. Um, well, these will, wait. will run here. Go click on there. Okay, yeah. go back. Get rid of the Python and the squeeze all the way back. Okay, hold on. Um, yeah. Okay, architecture all. Because that's the big thing you have to worry about, right? RML you need to get. Yeah, well, I was just saying to, to search, they have a search, but you got to get all the way back. Okay. Like I'm on the, on the search bar, go all the way back. Get so we're in here, or we're talking wait, where are we now? Uh, search, yeah, there. Go to the, the search package. Wait. Search the contents of packages and search package directories. Package directories. Oh. Yeah, just scroll up a little bit. It just... View package lists. Search uh, package directories. Yeah. There we go. Okay. You yeah, first just put it in there and you can go put the name. And there's also a section in there. I, oh, no, that doesn't matter. Just... Uh, package names only, source package names. Yeah. You just put it in Python and then... Python. Now this is... This is Debian. We want this is Debian. Stable is squeeze. Stable squeeze. Okay. So hit just hit search. Yeah, I just hit search. Yeah. So and this is not exact matches. So anything that has the word Python in it. Right. There's going to be way much. There's going to be a lot. Right. But then if you go to the package, it will then list all. You can go to the download thing. 
and you'll then see all the where to download every one of them. Okay. Great for the entire list of. Right, you know, but it may be once you've got Debian on there, it's app can install whatever. And, you know, dependencies are okay. probably going to be taken care of. Click on the, on the squeeze deal, the first one there, the exact one. Okay. And then if you scroll down to the bottom, scroll down to the bottom. And then, uh, we're we'll talking about the list of files. I mean, you can get oh, them from yeah. here. You want to go to architecture? They're all, yeah, I guess. Uh, I can't believe it's, it's not architecture. Just click on one of those, I guess. But I, I mean, Python itself is not a, uh, oh, that's a, ver I bet you that's a, That's a, okay, go back, uh, go up again. It's a, it's a virtual package. Yeah, this is a virtual package. So just, yes, click on one of those other ones. Talking like Python or Python profiler? Or yeah, like 2.6 or what, Python minimal 2. or whichever or something like that. Then we, then we'll really start getting into something for real. Lots of dependencies. Okay, here we're talking. There, there we, we are. are. Oh, it's okay. like Carmel. I knew we'd get there eventually. Yeah, what's R -R -M -L? <laughs> A -R -M -E -L. Um, ARM, ARM, the whatever the acronym for the chip, the architecture, the processor architecture of the ARM chipset, which is what the which is what the Raspberry Pi runs on. Right. Well, Meaning I understand that the ARM part, but why ARM L E L? Do you know what the E L and ARM L is for? I don't know. Okay, it means the magical arm. The, ma <laughs> the magical. It's yes. uh, Armel Electronics. Armel is Armel the the, uh, the the makers of the of the arm chipset because yeah. they license it out. To license. People. Oh yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. So there. So there we got. But you we, see, they got. So if you want to run on your IBM mainframe, there was the S three ninety. If you have your, if you have a cheap MIPS laptop from China, you can you can run. You can run it on there. Or on your so Wi-Fi access point, which are typically the RPC, PC, that stupid, uh, that stupid Mac Mini that has the Power PC chipset. Uh, I can run Python. Yeah. There's another MIPS EL electronic company, and the ARM EL. I'm just wondering what, I mean, what pattern are we looking at there? MIPS and MIPS L may be different. I I I cannot describe I'm myself sure as different. being incredibly confident and knowledgeable about no. MIPS chipsets, but I know the, the, MIP, the, the MIP architecture is <laughs> MIPS architecture is different than x86 and well right, um, but I'm just wondering why the EL. It, but it's, no, anyway, it's, so, it's ARM so, L. It's the ARM chip running in little endian mode. Ah rather than big endian mode. So it's so oh, that's, that's the reverse ARM by EL. Uh, that's the yeah. little uh, little in little Indian and little, little Indian e e right 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 yeah. little okay. Indian not big <laughs> Indian which is actually a, a completely tangent the, is that what the E L the stands notch game Indian ten X C yeah Indian okay. little all right all right all right so, so you got MIPS and MIPS E L yep. okay now if if specifically I want astronomy and cosmology and no, it's probably it's probably in there too. It's just a matter of whether there's enough memory. Yeah. Yeah. I said it, it necessitated a completely new port of Debian. Our for the, yes, for the for the little Indian chips, because the the original Debian is big Indian, of course, like most operating systems. I would say go, go to some, search for you can go actually go up to the top and package name. See it over on the right, up on the top. Okay. You can, Search for something else oh, if you like. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, astronomy. Yeah, astronomy, right. Education astronomy? For, for, Paki, for, for Python. I want to find Python. See, it's ARM programs. It's got the, you can see it's listed the <coughs> ARM the L one. It's Python there. programs that will run on Because they just automate that. Astronomy. They just automate it but unless, unless it wanna, refuses to compile, Python they'll have the package. That's what he's into. So you want something, you want an open source astronomy program written in Python, packaged for ARM, little Indian. Okay. That's, I if mean, it were, can't be much more. If, if it were here, it would be here. Uh, Debian Science Astronomy Dev Packages. Okay. All right. All right. I, okay. I, I had a friend who programmed his own astronomy, and you could look from Alpha Centauri at the Earth and it would show like, 
different positions. You could be a young uh, star. No. Java? I see Java here. So that's Java. No, we want to stay away from Java. Right. Now. right. I mean, I. He, so where was this? What's the di dash DEV? That just means it's not stable? It's no, the, no, no, no. That's the, that's the, that's the oh, stuff for, for, do, for yeah. compiling. It's the, the development I environment for okay. working on the software, not not simply the compiled runnable right. version that a consumer and or so, end user will okay. okay. And you should be able to cross compile, actually take the stuff and compile the packages on another type of processor for the ARM. Oh, I'm not sure the exact process you do this exactly, but I know it, I know that's that sort of people do. Yes, you know. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. So this you you got me close enough. That, yeah. That's fine. And, and you can <laughs> limit your searches to an architecture, RML. <coughs> I say it's mostly going to be a matter of whether there's enough memory in it, because unless there's something very, very you know, processor specific yeah, about it. Like the thing has a ton of assembly code or something like that in it. That's, or if it's C, it's going to compile, you know? Okay. Yeah. So, okay. yeah, so so if you're, if you're running Debian on the Raspberry Pi, that's a way to look before you install. After you install, you can just do what app get search, app get. Well, there's an app yet, you know, install, you know. App, yeah, app get install, and it'll ask you to come. Right, yeah. So, so, but yes, the, and again, if you have questions, there are a lot of communities. There is, uh, hey. yeah, if, if you, uh, again, there's Stack Exchange, Raspberry Pi. Stack Exchange com. LN14 um, has its own yeah. Raspberry Pi section. Yeah. Raspberry Pi has its own Thanks. forums themselves. Um, and the internet in general will probably say, oh, Raspberry Pi, uh, because it is like, it is the new hotness. It, it's, it, as, as far as people that want to do something with it and make projects from it, I don't know how they have attracted the attention of geek makers and hackers across the world. They have, so you've got that going for you. Um, you know, again, saying, I have an Insignia Infocast and I want to, versus I have a Raspberry Pi and I, you don't even have to finish that sentence and there's 20 people around you going, oh, Raspberry Pi! So, you know, that's that's the big difference there. The, the, the community and the number of people that are that are doing similar things or interested in the new things that you want to do, big difference. So, it seems like a happy marriage between uh, the Arduino enthusiasts and, yeah, that, and the Linux folks. It's right, kind of a, right. That's what that's, I was trying point. to think, remember it's, the name of. Uh, that's that's a right. I, I just see oh, the beauty right. of it, though. As I say, I used to do a lot of embedded stuff. And the idea, okay, for a lot of things, you don't need an operating system. You don't need all those nifty things. But the idea, a nifty thing of having a scheduler and a network capability, you know, something that actually functions and all that stuff. Right. And it's without really having better. to roll your own. And it's only whatever. 35 bucks with the network connectivity. Wow. That, yeah. That's cheap. Yeah, well, plus the, all the development tool, all available packages. Hey, you know, if you don't, wouldn't feel bad about spending thirty-five bucks and slapping that on some project out. Who knows? Well, where. Who then, cares? It's only thirty-five bucks. Well, that's, <laughs> that's the thing. The other thing about that is because hackers, makers, and, and the the assorted people have flocked to it as a as a place for doing cool and interesting stuff. You get, for example, Adafruit. Um, who makes a variety of things that are designed specifically for this platform, Arduino-esque, and that sort of thing. So you've got a prototyping plate kit, you've got an enclosure, you've got a cobbler breakout kit that, that basically puts all of these ports, instead of putting it on the board itself, it puts it on a separate breadboard so that you have more room to breathe and to work. There's a, here's a GPIO ribbon cable so that this thing is further away from the, the, uh, the board itself so you don't have to mess with it. The, here's a keyboard, here's a panel mounts for uh, USB, uh, panel mounts for Ethernet, um, you know, so that if you wanted to um, fl uh, flush mount this on in anything, because it's pretty small and can fit into a lot of things, that's actually one of the projects that I've been considering is, I was thinking about buying an old broken Genesis, like a Sega Genesis, oh, putting, yeah. this, putting this inside, because yes. it'll fit, it's small, <laughs> 
And it's USB powered, so really, the, there's not that many cords that need to go into it compared to all of the cords that originally went into it. Um, so, you know, it's, I, I'm, I'm going to try to find a broken one because it seems like a cry and shame to take a working one and cack it apart. But, um, you know, again, LCD screens that, that can uh, hook up directly to, um, they can hook up directly through composite input. Um, all this stuff is, is available directly from if. So if you say, well, I want to do this and I want to do this, you're not making everything from scratch. I mean, you are, you are still cobbling it together. There's a fair bit of innovation that's necessary for you, but there's also a lot of people that are working very hard at trying to, um, to get the, 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 the little details out of it. You, you're not custom fitting a breadboard um, you know, onto your project. There's actually one that's designed specifically for your platform. It's, you know, and there's stuff hooking up to Arduino as well. Now, is Adafruit originally uh, Arduino based or uh, Raspberry Pi based? Um, or is it just components? Lane, Lane Ada is, okay. um, boy, Ada, I don't remember her full name, but Lady Ada is, um, oh, that's her. Oh, Lamore Lady Ada Free. So this is Lady Ada um, from Ada Fruit Industries. She is a hacker type who is awesome. Um, and she has um, basically devoted her website slash business slash life to hooking other people up with cool stuff for hacking. Um, and if it's cool and if you can hack with it, you, it's very possible that you may be able to find it from Ada Fruit. So, you know, Eggbot, um, the, the previously mentioned um, bunny. So, if you want to do bunny stuff, this is, a, <coughs> for example, this is the Chubby Hacker Board, which is the internal, the internals of this. One thing to notice is that the Chubby Hacker Board is $89 from Adafruit and a completely built product with a touch screen you can get for 50 bucks on eBay. Like, you know, it, it all depends on what you want to do and, and what you want to start with. Um, but yeah, here's similar stuff here. Here's Bunny's new project, which is the NETV starter pack, which is similar, I would say more similar to the Raspberry Pi, only uh, NETV uh, hovers around 120 bucks, and the Raspberry Pi's 35 for the expensive version, which is one reason why tens of thousands of people are clamoring slash ordering slash having a Raspberry Pi and um, NETV is Well that's one of the ironies is this is the first thing is is that like the basic components in there like those ARM processors are like really cheap. Yeah they're dirty. All the stuff is cheap but there are no low-end boards well, other than this now yeah. that they all cost typically more like hundreds of dollars. Uh, here is one exception, which is another. Well, it's technically an, um, uh, it's technically a art, uh, Android based offering, but this is the Via APC, which is a. Um, it's not Mini ITX. It's smaller than Mini ITX, um, it, but it but it, the but the screw holes um, fit on a Mini ITX, ITX case. It's just it's it's just a, it's a portion of the size of a mini ITX board, which in and of itself is small. Um, but this this is you know for example if you wanted to to do a computer system, or or if you said well wouldn't it be cool if I took this thirty five dollar thing and I put Android on it, and and to that I would answer, well look at this board that's made by Via that has Android on it. It's forty bucks, but it comes with um, a VGA out. And um, a small amount of onboard memory. Or the the well, let's see right here. That's a uh, mini SD card slot, and all of the ports are on the same side, so you can put it in a case. Whereas Ooh. if you wanted to put this in a case, you're talking about um, going to Lady Ada and paying five bucks for the Ethernet breakout cable, five bucks for the thing, or doing it yourself if you want to do it that way. But um, you know that's that's the difference between you know there, there's a banana. It's not a huge banana. It's just a small board. Um, there there are a ton of things like this, um, but how much is that? Forty bucks or forty nine bucks. The 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 thing about um, forty nine bucks is 
we're accepting pre-orders soon, and it'll probably ship July 2012. As you notice, it's the middle of July 2012, and they're still talking about the notify me link instead of this right. is in my hand right now. Granted, <laughs> I asked for it in April. So, you know, that, that's the thing about cool new things is um, showing me pictures of it on the internet and putting it in my hand are two different things. <coughs> Open Pandora project. <coughs> yeah. um, you know, which, which still exists. Yeah. Uh, that's, again, that's another thing. So what if you said, I want to make a handheld gaming system out of this. Ooh, Open Pandora.org. Theoretically, you can probably do it for less than this costs, but there is a project designed around, um, you know, giving you an end-to-end -end complete, complete portable, hackable experience, and that is um, the Pandora project. But one of these is three hundred and thirty dollars, I think. Yet having um, the the CPU is around the same power as this because the original specs were made in two thousand and. Eight, 2009, um, and they, they've had problems scaling up all of the manufacturing to keep up. Um, and yeah, so the open, the open Pandora project, beautiful, lovely um, on the, um, the theory side, on the practice and all of the, the you know, the, the which, what do you want to call it, the, the practicality side of the on actual presentation and, and uh, production, meh, it's still, bit, you know, you, you can at least buy one, theoretically, and get it now, but it's four why, years later. Why don't you think the Insignia didn't take off? Then? Why did Insignia Infocasts not take off? Um, well, yeah, okay. So, so talking about who is the target market? Target market of the Raspberry Pi. Hacker types, maker types, and um, school children. That, 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 that want an in, um, and, and or people that want, or, or, or parents, or parent, want, parents slash want teachers who children. want to get their, their children into technology. Insignia Infocast was a um, private branded, chumby, flash based, Wi Fi notification um, push service, of which um, it was a managed kind of walled garden thing that the hackability was not advertised, more or less, I don't want to say hidden from the company, but definitely was, the, the, you know, Best Buy didn't say, we want to make this device hackable. No, they did not say that. Um, but, at, you know, as time went on um, and the price went down, the, the hackability factor became one of the, what I would say currently, the main selling point since Chumbi has gone bankrupt and the, the managed walled garden service isn't necessarily all it's cracked up to be anymore. It's hardware wise is incredible if you want to spend the time and you don't mind the fact that very few people know what the heck you're talking about um, as opposed to Raspberry Pi where people go, oh, oh, I heard about that because of the ridiculous amount of Attention, coverage, and popularity of many well, ads. That reminds me then that, that the man that was next to the to the board yep. uh, up on uh, Adafruit. Oh no, that's the the, AP, that's, uh, the APC the via I the via yeah. APC. So you right, sure right. It, it is the community the support community for that as you know, I don't know robust, or, or robust, robust, and. and so forth as, as with the Raspberry Pi. In one word, no. In in a couple of words, maybe someday. Right. But it doesn't exist yet. Okay. Um, basic, basically, I think what happened was this: the the Raspberry Pi went gangbusters, and Via said, "Well, crap, we make stuff. How about we make something cheap that pe people can pack up? Okay. Like we can give somebody a bare bones." hackable thing and maybe even put an operating system on it so that they can toss it into their old mini ITX machines that they aren't using anymore. Um, but that's conceptual pre-order interest right now and this is in people's hands. You mentioned Adafruit, <coughs> go to Adafruit, yep, for, Adafruit a, for, for a, um, uh, 
a case, a chassis for that yep. banana. You can also you can also 3D print them on, on Thingiverse and a variety of other places. If you have a 3D printer, you can print your own case. And um, Tim Bertram, I believe, was had, had printed one for me already. I really? tried to put it in, and it was kind of a tight fit. This so one, yeah. Oh, really? For the Raspberry Pi, yeah. Mm -hmm. But wow. but if you want. Um, it's now popular enough that on eBay, as well as other places like Adafruit, there are people that are happy to send you a case for you to put it in if you are uncomfortable with it just sitting on top of a, an electrostatic bag. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, so if happy you're looking to send it to you for what? 15 bucks. 15 bucks plus shipping? Yeah. I mean, where a 3D printed case will probably cost you, well, other than the printer. Maybe they'll have that at that, you know, uh, where's it going to be, Madison, Sector 67, that, that uh, 3D printer, Wisconsin? 3D, 3D printing, Wisconsin, Wisconsin Con, 3D printer, yeah. meetup. It's, it's, in Mad it's at Sector 67 yeah. in Madison. Wonder. Yeah. So, yeah, for example, if you went to that and you said, oh, boy, I would love to have a Raspberry Pi case. Yeah. You may or may not have people elbowing their way to, to show how great their extruder works and, and how faithful of a Raspberry Pi case that they can create. Because it is a small mm. plastic thing that is right down the right down the alley of a, of a 3D printer if, you, if you're looking for something to to make in order to show off how good your printer works. Yeah. Um, yeah. Are you going to that thing in Madison? Next Sunday? Saturday. Is that when it is? July 21st, 3D printing no, Saturday and Saturday. Oh, it's on a Sunday. Saturday, sorry. Saturday. Yeah. Saturday. Okay. Yeah, I, can, I can look for that. I'm going to try to. I don't know if I'll do it. Yeah, but, and, uh, Tim Bertrand from the Fond du Lac blog, he's got a 3D printer. Yeah. And he's, he, uh, Thingiverse.com is a place where you can go download uh, object models for your 3D printer to print out. And there are already Raspberry Pi cases in his printing one, so he can because he just got his today or yesterday yeah. or something as well. He, he printed he printed me one a while back, yeah. and I've did had it. it just I just forgot to bring it, it today. Um, I only tried to put it in once. I probably have to file it down. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, but yeah. So here's the distributed hacker maker network project board. Raspberry Pi awesomeness is one of the projects, and the Raspberry Pi case that I have and took a picture of it. It's here. So that's oh, you did that and that's your picture. Yeah, it's my picture. It's my case. I didn't print it, Tim did on his printer. Thanks right. Tim. Um, that, but that but that is, you know, and I put a pencil next to it just as a as a yeah, size. Are there, are cooling? Is that for cooling up there? Yep. Yeah, airflow. Air, it, it, it doesn't um, it actually doesn't have airflow requirements per se, other than I think you're supposed to give the components themselves um, something like a millimeter or two of, of open space. But theoretically, they were talk uh, there was somebody who was talking about uh, epoxying the entire thing, just you know, dipping it in epoxy. Um, and the, the, the statement was, well, yeah, well, they, yeah, you know, you could, but the, the specifications say give a couple millimeters of air. It doesn't have to be moving air, uh, but there has to be some air. So I'm surprised even the processor doesn't have some kind of little heat sink on it. Right. Oh, well, it's it's, not drop on it's low enough power um, that it doesn't need to, yeah. which is cool about, I mean, that's the cool thing about ARM processors is low power, low heat. They have the plug computing, which is really nice. It takes up like 25 watts or less than that. What's the total? Five. Yeah, five watts? Yeah. yeah. And, and you plug it into the wall and it's... Five watts as opposed to yep. like how many watts? And, and, and plug computers are another incarnation of the, yeah. of, of the Raspberry Pi, because plug computers are ARM chips, system on chips. So that's another incarnation of this kind of concept, only with less inherent hackability most of the time. I'd say at five watts, they weren't even trying to be efficient. Yeah. yeah it, probably, it, <laughs> yeah. It, it probably takes a watt and a half, um, you know, but... But if you hooked up a, a hard drive to it, it would take more. Oh, yeah. But yeah, so, and then uh, if you're talking about, well, I can hook this up to my, um, you know, well, I, I, I pay 35 bucks and then I put the SD card and, you know, you know what I really want to do is I want to hook it up to my TV and I want to make a gaming system on it. I want it to run Android. Well, that's cool. No. You know, because that, that's something that 
uh, I think two days ago started, maybe three, and in three days they raised four and a half million dollars because their Kickstarter project is ARM-based gaming systems, a gaming system, a uh, wireless controller, and uh, a guarantee of more or less um, hacker friendliness for 99 bucks. When you say a gaming system, my uh, sons who are addicted to Windows games? No. Android games. <laughs> right. well, Android. It's going to run Android 4.0. Oh. So it's, right now, it's, it's, they're planning on releasing it with Ice Cream Sandwich Android 4.0. They may upgrade it. I can't speak for them. But, but again, this is an estimated delivery March of 2013. Because estimated. Stuck. From are a these, Kickstarter. Are these games competitive or plan to be competitive with, with what, what they're addicted to on Windows? Um, they've already they've already gotten the guarantee that they're going to make Minecraft for it. I mean, it depends what they're playing. Okay. All right, um, all right. I'll give a list of what they're playing. Yeah, but that's Ouya. Ouya, super awesome. It's basically saying, hey, you know all those oh, those mobile games that you're you're kind of addicted to. Wouldn't it be cool if you had a game, like a hackable machine that you could hook up to your TV and use a you know a wireless controller and didn't have to hack it? That was pretty much just taken care of. Yeah, yeah. that's this. It's, um, it's plus, like most, plus you can hack other stuff to it as well. The most prolific Kickstarter to date, isn't it? Um, yeah, I think I think Pebble, Pebble was kind of prolific, and this eclipsed that. I mean, this is literally. You know, over a, they've been raising over a million dollars per day <laughs> on this. This is the project, Ouya. Ouya. I send that to, o -U -Y -A. to my addicts, Kick addict Kick children. Kickstarter. Yeah. yeah, Kickstarter. And, and again, Kickstarter is, I mean, when you're talking about angel investment, this is this is stupid people money. But, and and, um, and the, the reason I call it stupid people money is um, uh, if you give them a hundred bucks, what they're telling you is what the, this is what you're going to get. Whether or not you get it and when you get it God. is a little bit more, right, let's right. say, and it's, I, I, would, I, I would equate it to something like the Open Pandora Project, um, only a group. Because well, the open, oil well drilling somewhere in there. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, but basic, basically the Open Pandora Project was like, here's this awesome thing. Here's renderings of it. Here's, here's what it's going to do. It's, we even have, you know, we even have a board, we have a prototype. Isn't this awesome? So give us 300 bucks and we'll have it to you soon. And then soon ended up being, eh, not by Christmas this year, maybe by the middle of next year. Maybe by Christmas next year. Maybe by Christmas the year after that. You know what? And, and, and that was, you know, and that, there was a variety of, of issues, but anytime you have a new company that's making a new product, you may have those things. And, and don't let me say that I'm saying that Ouya is doomed for failure because the people that are behind it, um, I think one of the people are, is that, that's uh, a part of the company is um, ran the X, uh, like worked for Xbox, the Xbox team, I think. And uh, yeah. so you just need a few of the right engineering types. And, uh, with that, for, with the four million dollars work out, you should yeah. be able to somehow pull it off. I think. But ba basically, this this fit this the reason why it's making gobs of money, or at least is <laughs> go gobs of money are being committed <laughs> to the project. Committed, yeah. Um, is not necessarily in the bank. Yeah. yeah, it's well, it's 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 going to go. I mean, the Kickstarter the Kickstarter goal was well, five hundred thousand. Yeah, it was nine hundred fifty thousand. So they wanted to, they wanted basically a million dollars, and they already have four million dollars. They already have twenty eight thousand people. About one hundred and twenty bucks per contributor at the current. They yeah, could numbers. easily make so that. But, but yeah, we're talking people. number of number of backers. You're talking twenty eight thousand people that have already pledged to to buy a console. You know, you're talking about like a, like the TurboGrafx sixteen. A, a home console that was designed for you know for approachable gaming etc etc in the 90s. I think I think the TurboGrafx 16 maybe sold 80,000 over the life of the entire console. So and now you have before day one, day zero, you have 30,000 people that have more or less put already you know, take 
take my money, please. There's so, so you're talking, you're, you're going to, with Kickstarter, you, you are going to start your market with 30,000 consoles and any developers that know how to code in Android that have been shut out of Xbox Live and the PlayStation Network for too long. Um, yeah. And they go, they go, great, free demos, fine, microtransactions, whatever. Heck, we'll even give the game away for free so that people will install our other stuff. Like, the, 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 it's, it, it was kind of one of those, another one of those things, but it's, it's art, it's Linux, it's, it's an open source project, it's Android, um, and, and it's kind of the ARM, Linuxy, cheap chipsets, low power, you know, it's it's all kind. It's not it's not the same exact thing. But if you ask yourself, what do I want to do? There's a lot of there's a lot of projects out there that help you do it. Um, that if you said you know like, let's say five years ago you said if only there was something that was you know this big that ran on USB power that could play every video game that I played between the ages of eight and twenty. And, and you know the answer was yeah sure what nice. it's 100 bucks all right now here's the next thing that um, can uh, 3d three, make, drawing yeah. 3d models i yeah. mean sure. rendering or anything yeah. making 3d models yeah. in, in can that you can do in uh, what's that thing called by the by the uh, autodesk company not 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 autocad but there's a autodesk what, what's the 3D modeling uh, software that Autodesk uses? Isn't it isn't it Autodesk? No, that no that that there's AutoCAD that Autodesk, yeah. but there's this other product. But anyway, is there any possibility that somebody's going to be doing that so that we can do these mo do these models of non-Euclidean geometries in on, 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 on an ARM system? On, um, on, on ARM or whatever. We just need the software. Let, let's just, let's just put it this way. There, there, are, there are, it might be 3D Max. What? Or 3D Max? Or... Autodesk? I, I, would, I would challenge you and say that there are few things that actually use the ridiculously beefy dex desktop hardware that we have nowadays. And those things are um, 3D rendering, 3D... Uh, manipulation, which is basically yeah, I don't want, I don't want the rendering. Video, That's too, video editing. This, this, you just actually build, build the model, the 3D model. But don't you, you have to see the model to build the model? Yeah, okay, but you, you don't, you don't, so you don't want to see you're, you're, not, you're not rendering it in the sense of... You're pre-rendering is what you're doing. Uh, right? You're rendering... Uh, you're recording the x You're talking like wireframing? Well, a a anyway, <clears throat> um, we're getting mixed up here on the terminology. Okay. But, um, well, anyway, that see, that's what we need, uh, the ability to, to draw, to make uh, models of various parts of the universe, of the whole universe, in non-Euclidean geometries and draw 3D models of them with free software on ARM or anything, on okay. a supercomputer. Yeah, on something. Yeah. Um, It'd be nice if you could do it on these little things, but you know that that's, yeah. I think that might be a few years off. I, I, I guess my best answer to the question is I'm not very well equipped to answer the question. I can ask the question, but I oh, yeah. certainly you can can ask ask away. I, can't, I can't answer it. So we're talking. Non I'll, I'll find. I'll find something and post it. Lydian and, and CAD. Right. Right. Modern. Model. Open source. Of Our general world. world. What is it non-Euclidean? What? What is it? For? Why is it non-Euclidean? Because it. We need it for general relativity. For oh. The, Oh, models. Oh, okay. Perhaps, Cosmo cosmology. Perhaps okay. Dr. Sergey V. Vino Bredov could be a good person to MIT. talk to. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, well, open source, open source library, opencascade.org. And the thing about these non-Euclidean geometries, they take the Euclidean geometry and lay out all the, the nasty little details of the of the axioms in ways that you would never believe, and they throw away whatever they have to to get a an absolute geometry, an ordered geometry, a projective geometry, and two or three others that I can't remember right now. Yeah, yeah. Doctor. And you can do all these neat, and then with the non-Euclidean geometries, the hy hyperbolic and elliptic, and two types of elliptic geometries. And if you're careful about the axiom system that you start out with to get the full Euclidean geometry, then you can pick away different parts of it <coughs> and model this great universe that we're in. So Maybe even source? see it in a sense in this kind of space, but have it make some intuitive meaning when it's actually non-Euclidean. So my best Google of that is Mr. Dr. MIT that was at the top of the non-Euclidean CAD. Um, in, in his description, blur, it talked about the fact that he works with Open Cascade. And Open Cascade is a freely available open source software development program for 3D surface solid, solid modeling, CAD, etc., 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 etc. And um, system requirements for this particular project: 512 minimum, one gig recommended. Um, Can you do this on an arm? Beefy, beefy wow. stuff. Um, they're talking 32. They're, they're talking requirements being 32 or 64 bit uh, 386 processors or x86 processors. So ARM equals no. Well, right now it's 32 bit, but I just don't see the point of it. This is this is 32 bit. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a 32 bit ARM processor. But right. But I'm just saying. I'm assuming we're going to say 32 bit. I don't want to do it. You want to do that. You, you want to do 3D modeling, you do it on the most practical, economical form, which means basically... Right. You know, well, well I guess what, what you could... Okay, one, um, at Google I.O., Google introduced Google Compute Cloud and the ability to uh, render slash work on stuff. Oh, sorry. Right. Oh, okay. Sorry, I didn't... Totally fine. Um, the ability to render and work on things that are computational access expensive well, using free. use it well, not free, <laughs> but using up to 650,000 700,000 cores so they, they'll learn the process of rolling it out but you can scale up to as much power as you want slash need so theoretically what you could do is you could use a Google Compute Cloud in instance and have something dumb but, you know, not calling this dumb, but something low-powered hooking up to the compute cloud and doing all your heavy lifting via something cloud host managed or otherwise. So that's, so theoretically, then technically you could do that here, but this is just your gateway to get to your actual beefy processing power of the Google Compute Cloud. Looks like so apparently, if also if you if you're running Ubuntu, you can. There's a PPA that has Open Cascade in it. So if you want to install it on a regular Ubuntu laptop, it looks like okay. And we we got all this recorded. What you've been saying. We're recording. Yeah, We're recording that. Yep. Okay. So yeah. And but I don't have to write that down. And I, you don't have to. Okay. I, in, in my in my I I I'll When are you going to post this? Well, I'm, I'm usually the one who renders the video to upload it, so uh, as soon as I can. <laughs> like, no, no, usually, no, no. usually it's a week or so. Okay, okay. All right. And I did a search of Debian Open Cascade on, and Debian does look like it has. Debian, Debian has an, an Open Cascade ARM package? Why not? Debian what should I say? Debian's yeah. ridiculous. And so well, said, it's all automated. It's what is, all automated. So you got, you got the no. source code, it just builds it you for yeah. Yeah. Well, well not this is a, another one that's no, the, no, the answer no, is, yes, the no. Answer is The answer is not on a Raspberry Pi. <laughs> so theoretic, theoretically, if you hacked um, a, Nexus, a Nexus 7, which has 
you know, a quad core <laughs> ARM processor running at around a gigahertz, um, and uh, 12 GPU processing cores. And you've yeah. got that running Debian. Yeah. And when you were running Debian with it, you put on Open Cascade. That might do okay. So what's this? The, and the Open Cascade is the 3D. The modeling. open source 3D modeling and numerical simulation um, open project. Cascade open Cascade. Okay. And that's what? What was that Russian name? Or the dude. His name is Dr. Sergey Vinogradov. At, at, at MIT. Ocean.mit.edu. And he's Squiggle using. Sivindra. And he's using Open Cascade to. Draw models of so non Euclidean. Yeah, he was a major cross platform developer for the first open source CAD CAM library, which was released in 1999. So it's, it's mature. And he was doing non Euclidean geometries on this, in this. Oh, I think he said that. That's the software. I believe so. That's what you do with search you do. Yeah, he, I mean, he showed up, he was the first result for non Euclidean CAD modeling open source. Okay. And, and I misspelled Euclidean. And, it, and Google. Uh, it, yeah. yeah. It, Google it, said, it oh, that. you mean Euclidean, not whatever I wrote. It's not right. Oh, it's, I, it was E A N instead of I A N. So, oh, right. How dare I? But yes, uh, one of the things, it's, or at least it, in his curriculum vitae, Euclidean and not Euclidean geometry. Um, okay. So whether or not the it, CV. Yeah, the rest of it. Right. Yeah. But, um, no, you want to do it for you want to you want to render the universe. Well, parts of it. Parts. Just certain, to render certain some feet, of it. Because the universe is kind of big. Certain that right, might take right. a while to render. Right, we know. Just certain features to, to it it's hard to Make sense of the these these geometries, all these different types, without even trying to you know if you can make a, a little model of it in any kind of drawing and see that even though it might not be totally correct, you, might, you, you get some sense, some intuitive sense of it, and you're in a fuzzy ballpark. Right. Yeah. And. You know, you need that to make sense of the general relativity because it depends on these, this non Euclidean geometry and these tensors in this in these geometries. Okay. And if you can see this, even in a, in a uh, non pure way, then it makes sense to you. And you then, then you don't have to depend on the axioms. If you depend on the axioms, they're so subtle and that only a machine can understand them. When you really get down to the to the you know the deep axioms, it's like trying to understand a, a program written in Java or Python versus uh, uh, you know a machine language. Okay. But anyway, that uh, that gets us away from from your hardware. But, you know, we can we can talk about this at another meeting. Yeah. So yeah, that's googling the best uh, astronomical rendering open source. Um, that's just, that's another language too. Open source astronomy stuff. But you know, that probably should be doing cosmology. That's really cosmology. that's really what this is. Okay. Oh, well, Stellarium. Because with astronomy, you're interested in this cosmography, which is just basically where are the planets and the stars and the galaxies, Not the, the super galaxies and the clusters. But with cosmology, you're, that's where you get into the, the, the theoretical foundations, the, the general relativity, the non The big bang, the big crunch, the, all of that fun stuff. Right. Yeah. Right. So, Anyway, that yep. I, I don't I don't want to. That's a, that's enough of a, cool. of a tangent. Here. So yes, questions, comments, concerns, geek outs. 
start to take the day over. But, I mean, I, I'm interested in all that stuff. I don't have the amount of money and time it would take to to get all of them. Although it'd be cool. Um, you know, that's that's the type of stuff that I've been interested in lately. Because there's a lot of stuff happening, a lot of innovation, and a lot of different directions are or people are going in a lot of direction, different directions pretty fast. Maybe next meeting you'll bring your little 3D uh, printer. I might be able to, and, yeah. And, and dig it into it and pull that out and say, here it is. Yeah. I well, I mean, the, the case comes in two yeah. parts. So you can actually open up the case just to show it and, okay. and, and, and close it back up again. Um, so yes, perhaps next perhaps <laughs> next month I might be able to show you to not, not just a, not just a, uh, a board but a board with an SD card in it, and, um, and the, the right around. and the right cables, and maybe even a case, and an operating system, and maybe even a running board. Uh, well, I mean, what I, if, like, well, let's let's put it this way. Um, in I can hook up. And you can bring your your. Uh, yeah. you it's, it runs. <laughs> it, it runs. Yeah, it's got LED. And one of the things that it does have on it is LEDs. There's five LEDs in the corner, uh -huh. and one of them is power. That's what we and, and that's the one that's on. So it's, I'm right getting now. power. All right. Hooray! Power! All right. All right. But because it's saying, okay, boot from the wait, SD card, wait, wait, and there's no SD card. Can we hook it up? Oh, we can we try. Can you, want, you want to hook it up to the. Yeah, to this. All right, let's do it. Yeah, we're going to up to this. this yeah. Wow, let's see what happens. Oh. Wow. It has a composite. Uh, yep, composite, oh, composite and HDMI. There is a source. Awesome. No button. VGA. No, it might be no tricky VGA. to get the thing. Unless it stays up, it might be kind of hard to get the thing to yeah, the projector might not find it. Uh, you got this? Uh, you got a recording this one? Honestly, I don't even know if the image comes out. There we go. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, so, it's a it's, Panasonic. Oh, yeah, it's, that one. It's because it's, 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 it's entirely possible that Without it booting, it doesn't show anything. Because I don't know if it natively Reboot has it, the ability to output something. I don't know if there's a bias. There's some firmware, but I don't know. It blocks through all the inputs, I think, slowly. Yeah, because I don't, I don't honestly. Put it on an input, then reboot the card. Just reboot the card now and see what happens. Well, put it, put it on one of the inputs. I don't know which one is which. But anyway, we just let him reboot the card now. The question is, we don't know which one is which. Not yet, no. Well, then, oh, try the next one. There's only three or four. I forgot the part. No, but I don't think there's any other options. I don't think there's any way to tell which which one it's on. Well, I could unplug the cable so that it's the only thing that's given. Yeah, there is something to be said of that. Here, let me pull this. You pull it out. So, auto, 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 plug in USB. Because there literally may be incredibly little to work with without. How long would it take to put the operating system on that on an SD card? Download. Talk about five minutes. Um, with a card. And with, with uh, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a DD command. No, no, I don't. I, I, two I downloaded the, uh, I downloaded the image uh, today. Yeah, I don't think it's doing anything. So, no. So, yeah. Okay. All right. So, it's, so yeah, we, theoretically. We even taking a five-minute break. We still yeah, we, we, can, we, can take, we can take like a ten-minute break and have it running today if you want. I, I'll oh, stay. Right. Yeah, that's cool. Then I need to... Tomorrow, I guess, we, we could possibly.